Welcome back guys to round 3 of the LS Standard Constructed Final. Uh, we'll pan to the players now. Uh, today we have, in this match, we've got Brian Horseman on Mono Blue Aggro and Peter Fenta on Green Black Midrange. But he's taken quite a unique approach as he has a Plague Mare which is pretty interesting in his deck and he's Choosing to go with the dead weight as his rem removal spell, as well as playing dead eye. No, wait. Yeah, he's playing mainboard thrashing brontodons and okay, no, it's pretty stock standard, uh, except for death gorge scavengers and uh, the brontodons being moved to the the mainboard. So I think we just saw a mulligan from both players. So we're just gonna wait them wait for them to get shuffled up. Obviously, this is the match we were looking forward to because uh, the mono blue aggro deck is supposed to have a very good matchup against the green black yeah. mid range. Um, it has lots of counter spells and ways to protect the creatures that match in this uh, matchup as well as a bunch of uh, aerial threats that will make short work of the game. So we're going to see the players go down to 6 here. And we do not know who starts as of yet, but each player looks like they have a decent hand. Pitho with 3 lands and 3 spells. Brian looks like he has Two lands, maybe a little more. Okay. Two fine. islands and an island on top, so Brian's pitching his to the bottom. Okay, both are both mulliganing, I mean, scrying to the bottom. Well, it looks like Brian won the toss and elected to play first. Okay, that's a good draw from Peter, the, the cast down. That's going to serve as a removal spell early for one of these, one of these creatures uh, Peter's about to play. So Brian has two Tempest Gins. A, an Essence Scatter and a Wizard's Retort here. So we're going to see the Wild Growth Walker get Essence Scattered by Brian. Then we're going to see an Untap and I assume we're going to see the Tempest Gen. Yeah, we're going to see the Tempest Gen. Then I think it's just going to be an exchange of removal spells here. So we're going to see Peter go for the cast down on his turn, I believe. Yeah, we're going to see the cast down right now. Then Brian's gonna play another one. Yep. yep. Um, okay, but I think Peter's stored out on lands here. So yeah, he's gonna have to pay the Brontodon with his open with mana. With no payoff, unfortunately. So I think Brian is quite ahead as. Ooh, okay. Ooh, Curious Obsession is yes. a big thing in this matchup. So this is an attack for five here, as he has four islands and the. The Curious Obsession. So now Brian just gets to hold up a counter spell for the rest of the game in the Wizard's Retort, and I think he, yeah, he has the dive down as well. So he's definitely uh, protecting that flyer, yeah. and uh, so Peter's I, on a very quick clock here. I believe Peter's gonna go for the Ravenous Chubacabra on the Tempest Chin, and I believe that'll get Wizard Retorted. Okay, so we'll see the attack first. Brian going down to 17. And then the Chubacabra, the Chubacabra. and then this is going to get countered. This is going to get countered. I don't think... Maybe he wants to dive down and keep the... Yeah, maybe the, the dive down. Okay, so he'll use yeah. the dive down. And then we're going to see... Brian play an island, and now it's an attack for 6. six. Putting Peter down to 9. Uh, what's in his hand? I believe he's got a Spell Pierce, a Wizard's Retort, and another Tempest Gem here. Definitely an All Skies version for Brian at the so, moment. So, Peter did draw an Assassin's Trophy, I believe. So, I think he's trying to figure out when he's able to cast this. So, he's going to do a healthy attack for 5, trying to make a race out of this game. And then we're going to see a pass, I would assume. No, we're going to see find. Okay. 
No, we're gonna see the Assassin's, Assassin's trophy, trophy on the tem yeah, and it's gonna get counted. And then we're gonna see. I think he has two finds in his hand. I think I would even cast that just for the wild growth walker, just to maybe gain some more life. And there's possibly a good solution. But maybe he wants to keep it for finality because. The issue here is that he already has two of them. I suppose then the finality isn't really going to help him. Okay, at this so point. he just decides just to pass it back. Byron with the draw of an essence scatter. Okay. okay. So I think he's going to. Okay. Okay, so he's going to block the obsession and then it's going to be an attack for five. Ether down to four. And then I think we'll see the. Is he going to oh, no. play? In? He can't play another gin yeah, and keep up the scatter. No, he he can play the gin but keep up the scatter, but I think he wants access to the wizard's retort here. So mm. I think this game may be over, and unluckily for Peter, he drew the Merfolk uh, branch walker, which would have paired really well with the wild growth walker that he could have returned last turn. Ah, uh, with that find. Yeah. So I think this game is over. I don't believe Peter has any any removal spells he could use here. So I think we're going to be swiftly moving on to game two here. Yeah. So. so it's a quick, uh, a quick game for Brian. Yeah, he didn't. He he was able to stick his threat and then protect it with counter spells and protection. So this is what Brian came here to be. It's his expected meta game, and I think this is a good choice for this for this event. And especially with how much Golgari decks are actually okay, being so played. So let's pan to the sideboards and have a look what they can make use of uh, now. So. Brian's deck's pretty interesting, pretty counters based, more than I've seen in other lists, and he's playing a, a healthy dose of creatures here. In the sideboard in this matchup, I imagine we'll see. Possibly bringing in a, a gate. I don't know but if he I wants, don't think so. I, don't, I think he'll bring in the disdainful strokes. I don't think this is the matchup for Sentinel Totem, but. Yeah, this is definitely the matchup for Sentinel Totem, I think. I think he'll... Actually, no. If he has Syncopates, I think Syncopates are really good in this matchup. As it catches up on tempo, you just leave open mana. And, and also with the, with most of the green decks, the green-black decks playing find as well, that yeah. Exile comes in quite yeah. handy. It's also... And then Sleep. Sleep's also insanely good here yeah, because... Peter doesn't... Peter's still a creature deck here. Yeah. He still so, has to kill you with actual creatures. No, the issue is that... If it ever comes to a board stall, if Brian draws sleep, it gives him two turns to attack for lethal. Because it taps them and then it taps them for another yeah, turn. So, definitely. Brian's definitely seems to favor in this matchup. And then for Peter, he's going to bring in the Deadweights. I think he'll bring in the Dresses as he needs to get rid of those protection spells. Plague Mare is... I think he may bring in the, the Plague Mare, but it won't be good in this matchup because... The only thing it actually hits in... Oh no, it's actually very good here. Yeah, because it still hits Mystical Herald and Siren Storm Taper. Uh, so, I think we'll see that from him. Is I, he going to bring in another Wild Growth Walker? Just to give I, him a little bit more of a life cushion against He deck? may do, but the thing... The cards I'm kind of interested in is Twilight Prophet. Because this is a 2-4 a four flyer for 4. And if you have the City's Blessing... Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, you can look at the you draw the top card, but they they take damage equal to its converted mana cost, and you gain that much life. Mm. So, so again, a life cushion, and it's a beautiful blocker yeah. as well. With it a nice seems like each player has a large amount of tools for this matchup. So we're gonna see the players uh, finish off their sideboarding. Okay, Peter so has like, a lot of cards, yes. it, it would seem. It looks like he's uh, definitely uh, contemplating a lot of changes to his main deck tech. So, Peter being on the, the play of this game gives him maybe a slight advantage with the list he has. The only issue is that 
he isn't packing that much removal in the main deck in general. He has one Assassin's Trophy, one cost down, two Contempts, and then two Chubacabras. So I think... But he, he could possibly think of doing some recurrence on those Ravenous Chupacabras with the, find, with the finds as well. That is looking a little bit too much to the late game, I think. So I think he just wants to get maybe lower to the ground, maybe cut some of these Planeswalkers as... I don't think they can do too much of this game. I do like Vivian Reed because she's still cheaper than Vraska and has the plummet effect on her. Mm, so definitely, yeah, especially especially against Brian. So that Stake can be powerful. All, all the flyers. I don't know how much Peter wants Golgari Fine Brokers. I don't think this is a game about uh, accruing advantages. I think it's just about dealing with the board. So mm. Peter's just shuffling up and the players are discussing. Some choices from game one potentially. So it definitely looks like it's gonna be I'm worried for Peter as I think I think Brian's deck is still very favored in this matchup. I think he's his main board just has tools that beat Peter's deck. Like exclusion, exclusion mage is such a blowout when the the Golgari deck plays any kind of threat. It's not good against Ravenous Chupacabra, but just returning a blocker and being a wizard for the wizard's retort is very impactful. So it looks like Brian's hand is three lands, double it essence scatter. We can pan to their hands now. So we're gonna see that Peter Peter's hand looks pretty good here. Uh, he's got a good mix of lands and spells. I don't know if he has a turn two play here. Yeah, that's an overgrown two. We're gonna see the shock two, and then it's gonna be the wild growth walker or the branch walker. Here. Oh, we're gonna see the cast on straight away on the stone away. tamer. Okay. okay. So I think, yeah, so Brian's hand is pretty mana heavy. Okay, so he has another Storm Tamer, this is good. So I believe his hand is Lance, two Essence Scatters, and the Merfolk Trickster. So Peter's gonna play the Branch Walker, explore, finding a land, and then he's gonna play a tapped Overground Tomb. Yep, and then passing it back. Brian's, Brian's drawing a lot of yeah, lands. Brian looking Very a little flooded heavy. here. So we're going to see the attack for one here, and then the pass. Peter also land, land, drawing lands off the top of his deck I don't think he well. minds too much. I think he's going to go for the untapped forest and then casting the, the Chubacabra in his hand. So we'll see the attack first, and then are we going to see the Chubacabra? He, may, he might just go for the Jade Light Ranger here. It's probably a better option, rather hold off. Okay, the so we'll see the Jade Light Ranger here, I believe. Yes. And then I believe this is going to get Essence Scattered, yeah. Yes. Peter cleverly playing around the Essence Scatter, not exposing the Ravenous Chupacabra. And possibly keeping it for a bigger threat later on. Yeah. Because that Storm Tamer isn't presenting much of a. Yeah, it's clock not much at of a club. So I think. Peter's got to be pretty happy with the situation at the moment. I'm trying to... I think they're trying to figure out if he's shocked for any of his lands. Okay, no, it seems like they've come to an understanding. So I think it's... yeah, I'll okay. pass back to Brian. Brian draws a... Mystical Herald. Okay, so I think we'll see an attack for one, play the Herald, and then leave up both the... Trickster and the Essence Scatter. Essence Scatter. And I think... Does he have a Wizard's Retort as well? I did not see one in his hand. I think it's... it's I think he's drawn lands. I think it's either Wizard's Retort or an island. So, swing in with a Branch Walker. So we're going to see the attack from... And here's the Ravenous Chupacabra that's Essence Scattered, of course, we knew that was coming. Yeah. Plays an Overgrown Tomb and passes to Brian. 
Okay. So, Brian with another island. We're going to see the attack for two. Going down to 15 for Peter. Okay, so Brian with both Spell Pierce and the Merfolk Trickster here. So it, Peter might get punished for trying to go for a big Planeswalker this turn. Has he drawn into a Planeswalker? I don't know from his hand. Okay, so we're going to see the attack for two. Uh, the issue with Brian's game at the moment is he does not have a fast enough clock to threaten Peter. And mm. Peter's clock is even faster than uh, Brian's at the moment. Mm, on just one creature. So I think, yeah, he has to let this resolve here, I believe. So we're going to see the explore triggers. Okay, so, I th yeah, Peter's going to leave the, the, yeah, the he's going to leave the contempt top. on top. And I think at, on the end step, we're going to see a Mofo trickster tapping down the straight light ranger. It's I'm still a see. very small swing from Brian's side. Yeah, yeah but I think we may see another Merfolk... No, we're going to see a Death Gorge Scavenger here. So, in that case, I don't think Brian has a good a good time to play this Merfolk Trickster here. Unless Peter just passes the turn, but I don't know if he's representing anything. I be believe he's got Find, Land, Death Gorge Scavenger, so... If I was in his shoes, I'd probably just jam this Death Gorge Scavenger, especially if my J Light Ranger already already resolved. Well, he's passing. It looks like. I oh, think no. Brian with only two cards in hand. I think it's safe to get one of these kind of spells up, as you're already ahead on board. Mm. So I, I I think I think the Death Gorge Scavenger is what's supposed to be. Oh, that looked like the pass. Okay, so we're gonna see the trickster on the end step to tap down the Ranger. And then Brian's gonna untap, draw a, to a another another trickster here. So we're gonna see an attack for four, uh, doubling the clock of Brian here. And then I think we're just gonna see a pass back and hope that Peter tries to tries to race Brian here. Ooh, so the. If Peter tries to, if he sequences his spells incorrectly and goes for, let's say, a Merfolk Branch Walker first here, and then casts the Vraska's Contempt, he's going to get blown up by the, the spell pierce in Peter's hand. I mean, in Brian's in hand. In Brian's hand, yeah. yeah. But I think... Doesn't he just go Death Gorge and... Yeah, but I think he wants to get the most out of his cards. Okay, I don't think... No, he doesn't have Merfolk Branch Walker, but no, he has an Assassin's the, Trophy. Yeah, he's got this... I think it's Assassin's Trophy, Vraska's Contempt, Find Finality, and Death Gorge Scavenger. So, I so does think he not jam the Death Gorge and hold up Assassin's Trophy? I think, yeah, I think we'll see an attack with both, and then we'll see the Death Gorge Scavenger here. Oh, he's playing a pre-combat, it looks like. Yeah. Okay, so I think Peter may be going on the defensive here. Looks like he might be playing around some of those Merfolk tr tricksters in uh, Brian's hand there as well. Trying to draw so, some counter out now, yeah. so he can get through with the. Brian Assassin's is trophy. hoping so badly that Peter attacks here. Yeah. Okay, so we'll see the the exiling of the Storm Tamer to gain Peter two life. There's a land for the turn, so now he's got four. Maybe if he goes lands. for the Contemptor, then again it's also the blowout by the Vraska's Contempt. So this is. Quite interesting. I don't think there's a threat that he wants to really get rid of with the Vraska's Contempt here. And the life cushion isn't gonna okay, gain so we're gonna, much. Okay, so this could be a blowout here. So uh, Brian's gonna take the 5 damage here, and on the end step he's gonna tap down the Scavenger. Oh, so he's not. He doesn't. He just moves okay. straight to untap. I guess he can still do it in his turn, but he, then he wouldn't be... Then he wouldn't be able to attack that? with it. M maybe it wasn't a... It wasn't a trickster, it was a exclusion mage. Ah, okay. So we're going to see him return that, given a healthy attack for 4 again. This seems to be the closest game we've had on camera today. And Brian's still representing the... Spell Pierce. His, yeah, the Spell Although Pierce. Although, how successful that Spell Pierce is going to be against the Raska's Contempt in Peter's hand, I'm not sure. It, I think Peter's going to... Peter wants to use up the most man on his turn. So he's going to go for the... 
restless contempt on one of the two power creatures, I think, sure. or maybe something else. And then possibly the fine to re repopulate his hand. The issue with this is he, yeah, he's just gonna use this to kill the siren storm tamer here, and I think it's gonna be, yeah, it's gonna even be countered, so he's not gonna be able to gain this two life. But in his turn, he has the nice play of finding back these, this ravenous chupacabra and some of the other creatures in his graveyard. Yeah. Oh, there you so go. we're gonna see this. This is getting spell then, I'm guessing. Just to yeah. prevent the life gain, yeah, maybe? To to prevent, no, uh, this is going to get Siren Storm Tamed, I think. And then I think Peter might want to. Yeah, so okay, this is going to get sure. Storm Tamed. Uh, Peter only taking uh, three there instead of the four. And then I think we're going to see the. I think we're going to see him untap into finality here, guys. It I, wipes out Brian's ball. The issue with finality here is that if Peter's been playing around Spell Pierce the whole game, he's going to get blown up by the Spell Pierce here. So I think the smart play here, unless he goes land finality, exactly, then he can still pay for it. But I think find just getting the, the Chubacabra back is good enough. No, okay, so we'll see, the, we'll see the attack for five. Brian chumping, uh, Brian trading with the Jade Light and taking two from the Branch Walker going down to six. I think we're gonna see the. We may just see the. And Peter does have finality. that land in hand, mind, so he can play the land and then I, safely play finality, but I, I don't, don't know if the payoff is good enough here. Yeah, because it also gets rid of his clock. Yeah, so he's just gonna. Play the safe option. Yeah, gain two life again. Uh, are we going to see the find now? Trophy? Got Assassin's Trophy? Okay, so no, so, I, yeah. I don't There's think he has the find. Okay, his last card is far, so we're going to see find back the... Ranger and the Trooper? Yeah, I think I would have liked to see that first. Because then you can still go for the Chupacabra on one of these creatures here. Yeah, so we're going to see him buy back both of these creatures. And Brian seems to be stuck in a hard place. His clock for this game just wasn't quick enough. Mm, he and drew a lot of his one one power creatures, and unfortunately. Peter just able to, to do everything he wanted to this game. Okay, so that's a fine finality on top for Peter there. So his next turn is going to be quite... I don't know what Brian has to get out of this here. Maybe a Tempest Gen... Something like that, I believe. But it's gonna take him a while I to think get he back on the offensive may have here. Drew, uh, drawn a. I can't see what the card is. is it a dive down. down. It looks to be a dive down. I believe it's a dive down and a spell pierce here. So, I think Peter may may end up winning this game here. So yeah, we're gonna yeah. see the pass back and then. On tap for Peter. Peter he may just into a find finality, finality, which we knew. I think he may. Okay, he's not going to go for the finality as his creatures are just good enough to attack with anyway. So he might do it after combat. We're going to see attack with all of Peter's creatures, and this time Peter's going to end exile uh, a non-creature spell to give the scavenger plus one plus one to prevent a a trade with the trickster. Oh, but we'll see the Chupacabra here in the main phase. And of course, Brian's still got that spell pierce. But okay, no, we're going to see combat oh, no. with everyone. I believe we're going to exile uh, an instant of sorcery here. Probably an essence scatter. There you go. Yeah, There's we're going to the exile essence that. Scatter. A plus one counter now? Uh, just plus one, plus oh, one. Sorry, plus one, plus one. So, I think... Brian's blocks here are chump the. Yeah, he doesn't have any good blocks here, so he has to double chump, or he has to chump. He can throw okay. Away. He can trade with the no. He can't trade with anything. So he can trade the her her no. He can chump with the herald and then go down to f uh, go down to one, taking five here. But I think he's just double chumping, and we're gonna see the dive down dive to down. protect something here. We're gonna see the dive down protect the yeah the trickster and the so 
So it's just going to be an attack for 4 here, putting Brian down to 2, and Brian being able to keep hold of the Merfolk Trickster. So Peter may actually just play the Ravenous Chupacabra as another threat, as it is lethal here. Hmm. So he'll have three lethal threats then. Okay, but we just see a pass back. Okay, we see a trickster. Okay, so the trickster provides both something that can tap one of Peter's creatures and um surprise factor for the blocker. Yeah. Or the other creature. And provide a blocker. Not necessarily a blow up, but it does keep Ryan alive for another turn. So we can see oh the crack of the memorial to Folly to buy back the J Light Ranger. Providing some value. Peter drawing a farce here. Yeah. I think Peter should just say, go to combat, attack with both my creatures. Doesn't he still have that assassin's trophy from very early on in the game? There is... So that's a bit of a blowout against that flash, flash tap creature. What's this? He still has an assassin. No, he doesn't. In his hand, he doesn't. doesn't he? No, he can see his hand. So we're gonna see the trickster tap down the scavenger, and then I think we'll still see the attack from the jade light ranger here. Because it forces either champ block or a double block, which is still him trading the ranger for two creatures. Yeah, so go. I think you can see the champ block champ here. Block, yep. Yep, so that happens. And then Peter's gonna play two lethal threats, an, an additional two lethal threats. He's gonna play this Chupacabra, Chupacabra. and the other J Light Ranger you return. Yeah, sure. So I believe this should be Brian scooping. I believe. I don't believe I Brian don't has like a Rivers rebuke <sighs> or a cyclonic, a uh, cyclonic rift effect. We're gonna see him bend the no. Okay, no. so it's just yeah. He's so far he's ahead. Just he going, just wants yeah, he's anything. just putting yeah, creatures. So we're gonna see the scoop yeah. from Brian here. Uh, leveling up the game, one apiece. I. <sighs> I think Brian was just unfortunate not to have a fast enough clock in the, the early turns. Mm, I think drawing at just one power creatures early game. The didn't the difference between Brian's deck and most of the the mono blue tempo decks you see is he has chosen not to play Warcry Marauder. This this card is completely absent from uh, Brian's deck list. So the the two power actually does provide a lot of. A lot of damage in the early turns where he's chosen to go on with Night Veil Sprite, uh, choosing maybe the more card selection, finding the counter spells, finding the threats uh, sort of route. I don't think there's too much differences in the sideboarding of these two decks. Uh, Peter may just uh, sideboard in his sideboard back in his Lano Elves since he. No, he'll sideboard out his, his Lano Elves because he is on the play. He's on the draw, sorry. And Lano Elves is much worse when you're on the draw. Okay, so I don't believe... I I, I don't see what he sideboarded out there. But I assume this is a play-draw consideration. Okay, so Brian on the play here, is that a good advantage for his deck uh, if he can yeah. draw into big creatures? Of it? Well, bigger creatures. Brian definitely wants to spend one of the, f the first turns just playing a threat and then being able to hold up a counter spell for the rest of the game. And counter spells are so much better on the play than they are on the draws. You're, you're, you have the ability to hold up the mana before your opponent. Precisely. Does. And you get to the, the lands necessary for these counter spells before they do. So, I think. Brian should. He's yeah. gonna want to. Early game threat, curious obsession. Yeah, he's gonna want to try and mimic the the first game here and try and do that all over again. 
And I don't think his deck performed particularly well in the previous game. Yeah, his so. mix of his mix of uh, interaction and creatures was okay, a little so. off as he just drew way too way too way too many uh, interactive spells and not enough threats. It does have two land in hand, mind. So we're going to see the players opening hands here. It looks like Brian, each, of, each of the players are happy with their, their seven. We can see from Peter's hand that he has what looks like a lot of lands. So he's going to start off with a tapped over... No, a tapped woodland cemetery and then passing it back to Brian. Brian also seems to be flooded here, I believe. So we're going to see the attack for one. And then we're going to see Charter Course. Yeah, we'll see the Charter Course, drawing two cards. Drawing Brian, I believe it was a island and a essence scatter. So I, d I can't see a turn to play here for Peter. Oh, he does have another tapped land. I believe that's a second so woodland cemetery. No, that's a forest. So I think he's trying to figure out if he wants to cast a Murphy branch walker here. I don't know if there's much choice. Maybe he has a cast down in his hand and he's trying to figure out which one he'd cast. Oh, it's a oh dress. Oh, okay, go. so dress. Okay. dress is good jazz. Yes. It gives uh, Peter some information and can clear one of those pesky. Remove one of those pesky counter spells, yeah. but obviously. Uh, so. Peter here laying out all the cards, trying to figure out what he wants to get rid of. And how he wants to play his next couple of turns, obviously. So, Brian's hand here looking very good with uh, three counter spells and a threat. So, I don't think that. Uh, I think if you strand your opponent with all counter spells and he doesn't have the the biggest clock, then that's probably good for Peter, so I wouldn't be surprised if he would take the Tempest Gen. I don't think you want to take any of these other spells as they kind of serve as the I'm, same thing, yeah. like yeah, yeah, the yeah. Spell Pierce can be Wizard's Retort at some times and the Essence Scatter can also be that sometimes, so... Okay, so we're going to see Peter go with the Essence, the essence Scatter. So he's obviously trying to get a lot of his creatures to stick at the moment. So we're going to see the pass back to Brian. Brian draws a dive down. Okay, so I think he's just going to attack with the, the Miscloak Herald for one, and now he has two two points of interaction to protect the Tempest Gen on the next turn. So I think Peter here is going to tap out for a one of the one of the J Lad Rangers in his hand. So we can see. Okay, we're gonna see dead weight here. So I think Brian's gonna use the wizard's retort here. What is Peter okay. following up the dead weight with, though? I think I don't know. Okay, so you must have like a merfolk branch here. Okay, okay so, so we see the, the merfolk branch. Okay, okay, so we're gonna see the wizard. Okay, so we're gonna, gonna wiz okay, wiz 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 retort that. Okay. So I'm gonna see the untap, and I believe Brian Tempest is gonna Jin. damn the. Jam this Tempest Gen very quickly. Yeah. Into a, yeah. Tempest Gen hits the field. And Peter draws yeah. in. Brian into picking a up another Wizard's Retort, which is very good. So we're going to see the Jade Light Ranger here. Yeah, we're going to see the Jade Light Ranger. Brian has no care in the world for, for that. Peter putting the. Oh, okay. So Peter was digging for lands there and didn't want the, the Walker, even though it would be good at keeping his life total. Hi. Yeah, untap for Brian. He draws a land. I think Brian really wants to draw another threat here. So he's gonna attack uh, Peter down for Peter for five, putting him down to thirteen. And he has what three 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 different points of interaction here for removal spells Peter could possibly have. And this clock is much quicker than Peter's. So Brian looking in the favorable position here. So we're going to see the attack for 3 here, putting Brian down to 17. I believe... I think we is may... Is Peter going to try and... I don't know, another branch walker? Another caster? Yeah, oh, branch down. going to play another branch walker. I don't think Brian cares about this, as 
Not okay, yeah. His his clock is still okay. So now he may with his retort. The Brontodon. The Brontodon. Yeah. Just because he doesn't want that creature on the field. Yeah, he wants the. And if he rest draws Curious Obsession, obviously. He just wants the race to be in his favor. So we're gonna see the count spot here as. Uh, Brian has the possibility of attacking with six for the with that island and Peter's clock having five. So we're gonna see uh, Peter attack down to eight here, and then we're gonna see another pass. Oh, okay. So Brian drew a Murphy trickster here. So if Peter makes a hasty attack and then plays a creature second main, we could see a tap down, and then if Brian draws exactly an island, we'll have lethal. So Peter may have to be a little careful here, and I think I think it's looking very good for Brian here. So yeah, we're gonna see the attack here the for attack. five, putting Brian down to Brian's actually 12. taking it this turn. Yeah, he'll take it because he wants to. He wants to get the. He wants to get the maximum payoff from playing the, the trickster. trickster. So we're gonna see the counter spell here on. That. The Braskers. So I think we'll see the dive down here. Yeah. Okay, so, so we'll see the, the dive, dive down. down. Okay. And then, and then okay, that's so we, it. So we're okay, just going to see the so trickster here. we're just going to see a trickster just for an extra yeah, body on the field. And then if there's an island on top of his deck, which there is. Yeah, it's just a go. lethal attack. Just a slam. Attack you And bait. attack you. And there you attack go. Attack you Okay, the awesome. Hand. Right. Wow, Brian took that game in a quick fashion with just that Tempest uh, Jin providing all the value each land he uh, plays, just increasing his clock uh, exponentially, uh, drawing the right amount of interaction, just having all the answers to all of the removal Peter could possibly have. Uh, there were a couple so, of missteps in game two, but Brian's showing that this matchup is quite favorable for him. And that the deck he's chosen actually, uh, yeah, it's going to do some interesting things to the meta today. Anyway, guys, that's the end of round three. So we'll see you back here for round four shortly.